All right. Cool, this is the end right here. Oh, I left my book. Left your what? No, nothing. I say staying. Oh. <laughs> I had to get one in. Come on. <laughs> Sorry, Joel. <laughs> I'll point you in the direction. Ready? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so one of the things that I really get a lot of questions about in the Wichita Mountains uh, is the rock rooms. So the rock rooms are found uh, at the top of Elk Mountain on the west side of the Wichita Mountain Wildlife Refuge. They're often confused with the boulder rooms, which I will go into the differences as this video progresses. Now this is one that uh, can be kind of a tough climb. Uh, you need to make sure that someone's with you, uh, preferably someone that has gone through the rock room successfully before. Uh, Elk Mountain is a complicated mountain. You know, the northeast side uh, it looks normal, has hills and trees and all that stuff. And then it's as if someone took a razor and just sheared off the western sides. There's very steep cliffs and huge boulders. So from the south, southwest side of Elk Mountain, you're gonna notice three huge draws. Uh, the first one is known as Treasure Cove, and that is where the rock rooms are at, located there at the top. And also the slide and a lot of good climbing routes are here. The middle one uh, doesn't really have a name, but that's where the water cave is located at. And then the last one is known as Crap Shoot Canyon, has some of the toughest scrambling in the Wichita's. We're going to be focusing though here on this first draw today. All right, so you'll need a decent amount of gear. I always wear gloves because I don't like to scratch my hands on the granite, but you also need flashlights. I take a spotlight. Definitely need some headlamps and stuff because there are parts that are pitch black dark. So I'm not going to go too much into detail on the approach route from the south. Now technically there's hundreds of different ways to get to the actual rock rooms. Uh, but I'm going to focus on the, the two different ways to get there from the Sunset Parking Lot. Now if you park at the Treasure Lake Trailhead, you can see Elk Mountain the entire time. You can hike straight to it. Uh, Going bottom up is difficult uh, because there are some big climbs you have to make and stuff like that. So I'm not really going to elaborate on that. That's for more experienced people. Uh, you can go up and go across the chains and get to the other side, but it is very hard to climb through the actual crevices if you decide to go this way. So like I said earlier, we'll just stick to uh, the two methods that are coming from uh, the upper side parking at the Sunset Trailhead. This is a topographic map of Elk Mountain, and we're gonna start from the north side at the Sunset Parking Area. So you're essentially gonna use the Elk Mountain Trail to reach the summit. That's gonna take you about 20, 30 minutes maybe, and then I'll put the coordinates for the summit on there. From there, you're gonna head west, and then you're gonna to come to a giant canyon. You're gonna stay just to the east of that. There'll be one little area to kind of climb through and follow that over. So this is probably the easiest route up. There's no bushwhacking or anything. There's all trails. Uh, you can check out the summit of Elk Mountain and get you a nice view of the rest of the refuge. Now from here, once you come down, uh, there's trails that kind of speed off everywhere. So just make sure you stick with one that goes west and then you'll find a route that stays just east of that big canyon. That canyon actually feeds into where the rock rooms are at and the entrance is found at the very southwest end of that canyon. So. I also need to be very weary of uh, snakes and what have you. I've seen quite a few Western Diamondback rattlesnakes in this area, but that goes for all over the refuge. So just uh, be mindful of the temperature and the time of year. And if you need to wear snake protection, then so be it. But you're going to follow along this canyon. Uh, if it's wet, this is something you might not want to do either. And there's a picture of a Western Diamondback that I got out there. Now from this vantage point right here, the entrance to the rock rooms is directly below and to the left down there, your infamous triangle opening. Uh, you just need to scramble down to that slowly. There is a way down despite how steep it looks. Uh, but it's very picturesque, it's really beautiful in this place. So just find you a safe route down and that'll get you to the opening. Okay, so once you find a safe way down to scramble, uh, you'll kind of align yourself with the end there and you will finally see that 
infamous triangular opening. And uh, this is the main entrance to the rock room. There's a few other ways to kind of skim around to get in, but this is the one way uh, to get in to start your descent down into the rock rooms. So this is the other way that I go. Uh, you're going to take the Charon's Garden Trail and kind of wrap around like you're going to the boulder rooms, but instead you're going to cut up an area called the Northwest Gully. Now, once you depart the trail and you start to climb up, there's some more bushwhacking. There's quite a bit of scrambling. Uh, it's a little bit tougher of a route, but I really enjoy this one and my kids really like it too. Uh, there's some nice walls that you go up. Uh, you get to go past the dinosaur spine and mirror rock and stuff like that so it's really cool once you get past the the bushwhacking section then it turns into a really cool climb so going this way also affords you the opportunity to check out the centennial arch and i'll put the coordinates in here for that as well at this point you will be on the west side of that big canyon now the last hike that i showed coming from the summit of elk mountain you will be on the east side you're just on the opposite side here the same goal in mind, you just want to get down to that flat area right in front of the infamous triangle, which is the entrance to the actual rock rooms themselves. Okay, so the destination of both of those hikes that I just showed you will bring you right here to the entrance of the rock rooms. Now, we're kind of just hanging out, grabbing snacks, getting our gear together. This is where you want to make sure that you've got all your flashlights, headlamps, spotlights, whatever you brought with you because you will need them for this hike. So. I can't stress enough that if uh, you're claustrophobic or scared of exposure, this is probably not the hike for you. Now there are different classes of climbs in here. There's some class three, class four moves. There's even a couple of routes you can go where there's a couple of class five. So you need to know your hiking limitations. Same with kids. People ask me if uh, this is one to bring kids on. I've never brought my youngest on it, even though I think he could probably do it now. But just uh, be weary. Uh, you know, you know your kids' limitations better than anybody else. So. Uh, you need to be very careful if you decide to bring your children on this. So once you come down the entrance, uh, you're going to turn to the right. And that's the only path you can take to get in to the main area where all the holes start to open up. And at this point, you essentially just pick a route in. There's a lot of different ways to go. Uh, I've got several videos out there and in each one I go a different way in. Uh, this, this one here in particular was one of my friend Nathan showed me. Uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's tons of different ways to get into the rock rooms themselves. Uh, it's pretty easy to get lost as well and be weary of water. And I'll talk more about that in just a little bit. So I spoke in the beginning about how the rock rooms and the boulder rooms are often confused. So the rock rooms, uh, as you're seeing here, they are on the top of Elk Mountain. Uh, the boulder rooms... Uh, it's also known as Boulder Valley, is more at the base on the western side of Elk Mountain. So Boulder Rooms are more kid-friendly. Uh, there are some tight spots, but it's you don't need a headlamp or anything. If you want to bring a flashlight or headlamp to explore a little bit, you can definitely do that. But the rock rooms are much tighter. Uh, the crevices are a lot skinnier, the places to climb in and what have you, and it's very dark uh, pretty much the entire time. So uh, that's the glaring differences despite the location as well. But uh, here as we're climbing through the entrances, uh, we'll eventually approach the chain room. Uh, I always call these rooms like chambers, but in the chain room, you'll see giant boulders suspended. Uh, chain was put up in the 90s after Dr. Philip Mitchell passed away. He was a uh, climber that came through here by himself and he was trying to scramble across the chains and he fell and broke his leg and then he actually passed away from hypothermia. So there's a plaque for him at the Treasure Lake trailhead over there that says do not go alone. So uh, this one I mentioned earlier about this is not a solo hike. Make sure that you take somebody with you uh, just in case something happens. Because if you were to fall, uh, you know, obviously very bad things could happen. Anyway, uh, as you're progressing through uh, you will eventually hit that chain room. Now you can go across the chain and, and exit out into Treasure Cove and start your scramble down. Uh, as you can see, there's the chain right there. Now this was back when there was a rope attached to it going down. That rope has been removed. Uh, so some people do choose to go across there and head on out. I personally like to go through and squeeze through the room. So I'll go down and uh, I'll turn around and find the 
entrance just below where I am behind Nathan there. And uh, this is where the real adventure into the rock rooms begins. So when I was talking about the different draws that you see on the southwest side of Elk Mountain, I mentioned the water cave. So funny enough, I think that this should be called the water cave and then the one that's in the next canyon over should be called the rock rooms because I've never seen water in the actual water cave itself. Uh, I have, however, seen water in here and uh, I'll show some clips here in just a little bit. I've gone through the rock rooms different times of the year and uh, you know they've all got the pros and cons. You go through in the winter time, the rocks are cold. If there is water, it's going to be extremely cold. If you go through in the summertime, then you have the heat on the way there and you have to worry about snakes and what have you. So there's never a perfect time, but you definitely don't want to do it right after a big rain because in the last little room or chamber, as I called it, uh, you have to duck way down. And if there's waist high water, your body will be completely submerged, including your head, just for a minute to try to get out. So. You have to be very careful, and uh, I'll tell you in a second on how you can tell if there's going to be water in it before you hike all the way to it. So you can see why uh, I talked about if someone's claustrophobic, they may have trouble in here. There's a lot of really tight squeezes that you have to make, and uh, there are a few places where you have to slide down. That's why I talked about the bottom-up approach being very difficult. Much easier to go top-down. Matter of fact, I've never gone from the bottom up uh, but when there's no water in it and it's dry, uh, you know, it's, it is better. You know, obviously the wetter you get, the slicker the rocks and stuff will get and, uh, can definitely affect your footing and you can fall and hurt yourself. But, uh, you can see, you just got to take your time, go slow and, uh, you'll eventually get through it. But something else to be on the lookout for, especially when it's warm or daddy long legs. There are daddy long legs everywhere when you get down here. Of course, they won't hurt you, but, uh, or someone like me that doesn't really care for spiders, then uh, it can be a little nerving as you're progressing through this to see millions upon millions of daddy long legs. But I have never ever seen a snake uh, anywhere here in these cracks and crevices. So there at least is that. So I've combined video clips from several different trips in here just to show the different areas and uh, stuff like that. I captured different things on each trip, so. But it's pretty much just a mishmash of different trips that I took uh, coming through the rock rooms, lessons learned and stuff like that. So now I'll focus on the water a little bit more. Uh, I did go through in January one time and the water was ankle to waist high, uh, which being in January meant that it was very cold. Now here's a clip from that January trip. As you can see, I'm shining a light down onto a small waterfall. When there's water in there, there are several small falls. Now, the best way to tell if there's going to be water in there is if you're approaching this little waterfall after the Sunset Bridge. If there's water running here, there will be water in the rock rooms. So this portion here, you can actually see, it's about ankle to knee deep here. Nathan's making his way through it. So the water's not really an issue here, but when you get into the last room, let's say there's three main rooms, that's where it becomes a problem because that's where it can be waist high and you actually have to duck down. And yes, those are bats. There are a lot of bats in here perched up on those rocks up high. So try not to disturb those because remember this is a wildlife refuge. So let them be. So more squeezing in the crags and crevices. Uh, there's going to be a lot of that. And as you can tell, you need lights. There's just no way to get through this. There are some parts where the sunlight shines a little bit, but for the most part, uh, you can't make it through without some kind of light source. So, and this is in the middle of the day. Now here's that last room that I talked about. This is where it gets waist high and uh, snaps some pics and Nathan coming down that big jump there. This is one of the parts that are really hard if you're going bottom up to try to go up that part. But anyway, this is where the water gets the deepest at. So early on, I mentioned the chain room. Now, if you took the chains and went directly across, it would bring you out here to Treasure Cove. This is us exiting the rock rooms and going out into Treasure Cove, which is at the very beginning. I showed you the big draws, it's the very first one. So it's very steep. There's a lot of bouldering here. And uh, you know, once you made it through the rock rooms, now you have to negotiate uh, the steep rocks and the Southwest cliff of Elk Mountain. 
So there are three main ways down Treasure Cove. You can go all the way to the right, but it's very sketchy. There's slit grass. There's a lot of places to slip and fall. I don't really like that one. You can take the middle. Uh, there's some bouldering. Uh, if you brought some rope, that's your best way because it's about a 10 to 12 foot drop. I've seen some people just slide down or you can use the slide, which is here to the left. Now the slide is giant slab that uh, is very steep. Uh, it's very intimidating. So that's why a lot of people uh, choose to go around it and take the bouldering. But uh, I usually use the slide. Uh, most of the time I just walk down it, uh, you know, with some shoes with good grip, but we had so many kids and stuff with us on this day that we decided to just kind of scoot down slowly and stick our foot in that crevice uh, to kind of hold us in. Because like I said, this uh, video footage and pictures don't do it justice. It is very steep and uh, very slick in some spots, especially this right here where you have to go across. It is, uh, it's pretty intimidating. Uh, for sure. And you can see the slide from, you know, mountains away. It's very big, but, uh, it's very cool. And it's, uh, it's definitely an adrenaline rush going down this. So Treasure Cove, uh, contains a lot of really good class five climbing areas. Uh, if you pick up Tony Mays' Oklahoma rock book, uh, it's awesome. It's got a lot of routes in this area. And a lot of times I see other climbers and stuff doing some of those routes. So as you're coming down Treasure Cove, uh, got a decision to make so if you still have some energy left you can swing through boulder valley which is just below you and around the corner uh, you can check that area out and then once you're done with that you can just continue on around the Cheren's garden trail back from where you started if you don't want to uh, you can simply just go around echo dome and uh, link back up with the Cheren's garden trail and go back to the parking area so the apple and pear that you see there are kind of a famous formation that sits above and to the south of Boulder Valley. Uh, as you can see here, Boulder Valley, Boulder Rooms, whatever you want to call them, they're a lot more open. Now, there are some places you can go squeeze in, just like the rock rooms, but it's uh, not as elaborate, I guess you could say, and not as tight as the rock rooms. This is really cool after a big rain here because there are a lot of water features and stuff that you can see, a lot of little small waterfalls and what have you. So I think this is a great place to bring kids uh, if you don't feel safe taking them to the rock rooms. Uh, and this still does have its inherent dangers. You know, you still got to worry about snakes when it's warm, uh, you know, the water at times, and then the rock, uh, especially if it's wet, it will be a lot slicker. But uh, the boulder rooms are really cool. My kids enjoy those. Uh, probably a little more than the rock rooms because it doesn't take near as much work to actually get to the boulder rooms. Okay, so like I said, I just wanted to kind of show you some of the best ways to get to the rock rooms themselves. Uh, if you decide to take this adventure on, uh, just ask you to please be careful, be responsible, take everything out there that you need, take another person with you, uh, preferably someone that is experienced in the rock rooms, and uh, watch the weather. You don't want to get caught out there, uh, you know, in a rainstorm or something like that, but just be careful and uh, be very mindful, know your limitations, and uh, let some other people know that you're actually out there. But be safe and, uh, Enjoy it. It's quite an adventure.